Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at a repeat visitor to my channel. And so that knife right here, this is the Smith & Wesson OTF. This is the 10th generation Smith & Wesson OTF they've released. And I actually made a video on this knife almost exactly three years ago. So back in 2018, I made a video on this knife. And the reason why I'm talking about the knife again is because looking at my channel's analytics, that is actually my most viewed video. So it is without a doubt the most popular you know, video on my channel. It has about 45,000 or so uh, views at this point. And for my channel, that's actually pretty, pretty darn good. And so that made me question, you know, what's so special about this knife that it's by, by far the most popular video that I have, I have available on my channel. And so I'm thinking about that question and I decided to rebuy the knife because the original one that I purchased for that video is long since sold off. You know, I sold it off. It was uh, just, you know, for the channel essentially. And I know it's, this is not a knife I'm going to carry. So I decided just to pass it on to somebody else. So taking a look at this knife now, same knife in my hands right here. This particular variant of the knife has the FDE color, so flat dark earth. So very much a tan colored handle, but it's still the same essential knife. And so three years later, what I was hoping for was that Smith & Wesson would have an 11th generation OTF released by now, but I maybe they're not quite there yet. But let's just take a quick look at this knife. So we have an OTF automatic knife, and I know it's an assisted automatic, but for all intents and purposes, it functions exactly like a single action auto. So it is an automatic knife. Um, it has the little switch up here to release the blade once it's deployed and you can just snug it right back in the handle. So very simple to operate. Can easily open it and close it one handed. I know in my last video I didn't mention that but there you go. Fairly simple. Just get a low grip, grab that slider, bring the blade back down, lock it in place. So with the lock in place the knife will not deploy. Open it up. Knife does come out. What I will warn is a safety issue. Do not try to lock the blade open with this safety. What that will do is you can still bring the knife back in. So check that out. But it will not lock into place. If you look closely here at the bottom, you're going to see part of the blade still sticking out because that safety is impeding the path of the blade. So make sure that that safety is not turned on when you are retracting the knife. But that being said, this knife is a fairly thick knife. It's a fairly heavy knife. It's a three and a half inch blade, AUS eight steel. Let's take a look at the thickness. I'm gonna choose the thinnest part of the handle right here to measure. So let's just put the measurement to the test. So about yeah, less than 17 millimeters at the thinnest part. So it's still a fairly thick overall handle. So for an 11th gen, if OTF, if uh, Smith & Wesson is making another OTF, I'd like to see them thin that down a bit if possible. You know, the aluminum handles, the steel liner right in there does add to the weight. So this knife does come in at six ounces. So a three and a half inch blade, six ounce knife. Um, is, if that's too heavy for, for some people, you know, so be it. I think most people aren't going to notice it once it's in the pocket. And uh, with the pocket clip right here, I will mention it is, of course, not reversible in any way, shape, or form, but you also cannot take off the pocket clip without fully disassembling the knife. And you can see the screws right here on the pocket clip. They are threaded in there, but they're reverse threaded, so they are screwed in from the bottom up. So you would have to remove this top scale and flip it over and you know remove this, the pocket clip that way. So they obviously intend the pocket clip to be part of the knife, so just keep that in mind too. Um, we do have the glass breaker on the end, so that might, ha might have function for some people, maybe not for others. Um, but again, it's a very simple knife. It's an OTF, single action. Let's take a closer look at the blade. So on one side of the blade right here, you can see the MMP logo. This particular version, it looks kind of fuzzy, like they, they didn't print it quite as well. And on the reverse, I actually like the markings here. Uh, we can see the blade steel listed. This is AUS-8 and the production date. So this particular one was made in December 2020. And this nice double-edged 3.5 inch AUS-8 blade, sharp on both edges. Very pointy, pokey tip right there. So very much a knife that, you know, in a way it's designed for a stabbing action. Um, so, you know, as a utility knife might have less use because you certainly cannot put your thumb, you know, on that blade at all. 
so it would also be nice to see, you know, Smith and Wesson come up with various blade shapes for this particular style. I know they have it for their older OTFs, but I haven't seen anything but the double edge for this 10th generation model. So it would be nice to see a single edge, you know, drop point or spear point blade just for utility's sake. Um, but let's make a few comparisons. So first off, I'm going to just use my standard comparison knife. So let's take a look at the Kershaw Blur in comparison to the Smith & Wesson OTF. So you can see the overall size comparison right there. Um, overall length is a little bit smaller with the Kershaw and the, um, the width though, of course, much thinner. You know, because there is no auto action in there it has to deal with. Just, you know, thinner aluminum scales. So there is that. Um, but a few other things I wanted to compare it to, actually. When it comes to thinness, I wanted to compare it just to one of my Microtechs. So this right here is the Mini Trudon. And of course, this is a much smaller knife in every dimension. But looking at the thickness, it'd be nice if Smith & Wesson could start to find a way to try and thin out their big knife here. Because if we can get this Smith & Wesson OTF just thinned down a little bit, um, that would be a real good step in the right direction. You know, so this knife definitely must be popular. You know, I get a lot of views on it. I'm sure it sells very well because it's in full production so long after it was released. Um, and again, the question is why? I have a few theories, and you can agree or disagree with me in the comments below. But number one, it's a Smith & Wesson brand. And so that's not a great knife brand. In fact, most Swiss, Smith & Wesson knives outside of this knife here are complete junk. Do not buy any Smith & Wesson folders thinking you're getting a great deal because they're all Chinese-made garbage, low quality. This one's really the exception. This one is made in Taiwan, if that makes a difference. But the fact that it's an OTF, you can tell they put a little bit more thought into it. And as a result, it's pretty high quality. Um, so the Smith & Wesson name brand, I think, is drawing in the majority of buyers because the people who buy this knife are not going to be knife people. They're going to be people who may be in the gun community, maybe are looking for a name brand of something they recognize when buying a knife, and Smith & Wesson just you know checks that box right there. So I think that's one of the biggest influences right there is the brand name Smith & Wesson. Number two, it's an OTF knife. It's an automatic knife. It looks super threatening. It looks very aggressive. And it costs, the, this knife costs $40. So it's not, you know, a Microtech, it's not a Benchmade OTF that are going to cost into the 200 plus dollar range. Um, this is 40 bucks, you know, and I, I bet there are certain states they probably have these right on the shelf in your big box retailers, and you can just pick one up in person, buy it no problem. I think that's leading to a lot of the success of this particular knife is just its availability, its name brand, and its price. Because uh, most people who are not knife people are going to look at the price of a Microtech OTF and they're just going to laugh. They're going to say, who on earth would spend that much money on a knife? And um, they're just not in the know. And so that's their first thought. And so from the knife enthusiast perspective, absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, and I'm glad that Smith & Wesson in a way did step up to produce a knife like this that's good quality and inexpensive. So that being said, I think those two factors alone are one of the reasons why this knife has done so well. Um, so I think that's why it's literally the most popular video on my channel. I had no idea when I filmed that video that it would be so popular. And if I had, I probably would have put some more time and thought into it. Um, but it's neat to see it, you know, three years later how it's performed and that people still to this day are watching that video and getting information from my channel about this knife. Um, but that being said, if you have any questions or comments about this knife, feel free to leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts on this are. Um, I'm just kind of excited to bring it back onto the channel. You know, maybe I'll hold on to this one for a while. I'm not sure. I know I'm not going to carry it, but it's such a cool conversation piece. You know, maybe it's worth keeping for that alone. Um, so, and of course, I like the coloration on this one as well with the flat dark earth uh, tan color. I like how it pops with the black hardware. So super cool. But most of all, thanks for watching the channel, everyone. Have a great day and bye-bye.